Committee of the Whole to Order. First thing on the agenda is termination of existing Otto Miller Athletic Park Agreement. And it should actually said agreements. Uh, sorry. Um, I passed out the current, well, the current letter of understanding with Portonville Youth Sports and the current Otto Miller Athletic Park Agreement with Portonville Area School District. Uh, if you'd like, you, if you notice, the letter of understanding with Portonville Youth Sports uh, basically expired February 5th of last year, and the agreement with Otto Miller Athletic Park with Portonville Area School District expired May 31 of this year. So instead of uh, rolling these forward, I'm recommending that we uh, terminate these agreements and work on new agreements. That would be item number two in the agenda. What does that entail? What's the new agreement? Well, we have to work on that. Do you we have any ideas? Well, a new agreement? Yeah. Well, we need to make them so they're actually beneficial to all parties. Uh, well, so, so it would basically be structured the way it is now? Somewhat? Well, or not at all? Well, I'm looking for more responsibility. Discussion on number two on here. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, these are technically expired. I just want to make it official. So we need a motion to recommend to the full board to terminate yeah. these? <coughs> also moved. I'll second it. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. I'll be recommended to the board to terminate these agreements. So now we can go to the next is discussion of future agreements. Now that's where uh, we need to figure out what's best for us, what's best for eSports, and how the school district plays into all this. There were some concerns that eSports might not get to do some of the things that they do now if we would have sold it to the school, uh, the property, or rented <coughs> it to them. And he, uh, after talking with the DNR, we could never sell that property to the school district. Uh, our only options were to lease it to the school district. Uh, what Public Works is looking for is for someone, uh, there's always been a bit of a uh, different perspective from the school district. They feel $10,000 is way too much. We get prodded and needled about that all the time. $10,000 is nothing when, when it comes to taking care of that field all year long. Uh, what I'm looking for is either more responsibility out of them or more responsibility out of these sports on maintaining the fields. Uh, the cost is just getting a little bit too much for uh, public works to subsidize anybody. So what does it cost us to maintain it? Thirty or fifty thousand a year. Oh well, and they're paying ten. Yeah, we have to take so care of it. Is ten just the lease? Because you know, when I read this over, yeah. I don't see anything that says we have to take care of these fields according to WIAA standards. No, I don't either. And not only that, do you know how many communities are in the Hortonville School District? But yet, the maintenance on that field is going on village residents' yeah. taxes. There are eight communities in the Hortonville area school, school district. Yeah. They should be maintaining it, and every single person in the Hortonville area school district should be paying taxes on it. Yeah. We, so we so not that. the village residents. Yeah. Well, that's one of the discussions that Carl and I had. Rather than saying, okay, they pay like 40 or 50 a year for it, to make an agreement where during the period they use it, they maintain it, and also with the use force when they use, you know, they maintain it during their time. And, well, and Hortonville and Use Force did. actually have to pay money for it. To, <coughs> yeah. Is there overlap though? Hortonville Use Force did express mm -hmm. that they would yeah, do whatever they, they need to do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and, and again, we're going to do whatever it takes to make sure they have all. So, you so what, what you're saying, Jeannie, and I would agree with you, <coughs> is that the 10000 is just a lease. Yes. So there's, what there's you're proposing, or what, what I hear you say, is lease it for ten thousand, but let them maintain it. Yes, at least it's our 10, property. Ten thousand is cheap. When I when I look at all the when I look at all the um, different articles in the newspaper about how the school spends their money on their different fields, uh, they spend. 
millions of dollars over in the football field. They spend thousands of dollars in the soccer field. So I feel that they should also be maintaining the baseball diamonds that they lease. It, and my question, and, yeah, my question is though, doing that is, can we put kind of some kind of stipulation on there that Hortonville Youth Sports gets first dibs at scheduling, or that I guess my fear is if they lease it, is Hortonville Youth Sports going to be, still be able to do their? I, well, I think we can mandate that. Yeah, no, and that would be expected. We would want Hortonville Youth Sports to mm -hmm. basically manage the concessions. They would continue to do that if I'm not correct. Uh, they would handle the scheduling, um, not so much for the high school, but they would work their schedule around the high school and then handle scheduling from that point forward. Have there been conflicts in the past with school and youth sports as far as scheduling? Not Have really. Not really. It doesn't seem uh, like not to, no. Nothing major. No. I think just opening, just opening day they had a WIA game in yeah. the morning that and, and it backed up everything on opening Tournament day time. of youth yeah. sports. But yeah. That's because we had a horrible spring, right? Right. And they had to get that game in. Are you here from Hartonville Youth Sports? Yes, correct. Okay, we so both are. My question is: Have you spoken to the school district at all about any potential? Because I'm under the impression that there's been that there was some discussion, but then I'm told there wasn't some discussion. So I just want to know: I mean, has has there been any kind of open dialogue between the school district and Hartonville Youth Sports? So no. what I've read on um, two is inaccurate. I just want to make sure because I'm getting. I mean, different stories, and I just want to make sure yeah. that we're not setting any, we're not setting any conflict up in the future. I just no. I think um, there was some discussion um, mentioned to us about things that were decided that we didn't know about, yeah. and then you know what came about that it wasn't decided that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then, since that happened, there hasn't been discussion with us because you guys mean you guys yeah. are going to maintain the the park so. I guess our discussion is more with. I just you don't want guys. to step on any toes. Is yeah. that what I'm worried about? Because we got, I got a copy of an email that was sent up by Horton Blue Sports. Then I got a letter that was read to us at our last board meeting, which completely is opposite of what I think really happened. And I just want to make sure that we're not stepping on any toes. Okay. No. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. we were given uh, in early June. Craig was received a phone call. And basically said, "Park is sold." I and that <laughs> yeah we can't. That, that yeah. information we went off of. Yeah. So that that's where we went forward. So okay, and I I get it. Sometimes, sometimes <coughs> I just want to make sure that we're not stepping in any tools of, of discussions that no. might have happened. No, and we're fully. What we've no. been doing for the past few years is we work with the school. Um, there's basically one, one main schedule for HYS, work with the school, we work around what their games are. Mm -hmm. The only yeah. major conflict we had was opening day this year, um, and we worked that out. And, mm -hmm. you know. Is this something, and Bob's not here right now, is this something that if we're entering into an agreement with the school district, obviously Bob would need to, to check that all over, but we need to make sure that we're covered. We don't, I guess my fear is, if they're leasing it, or is there a limit of alcohol? Because I know that that was a big discussion too. With uh, I don't think leasing would affect the alcohol, but we might want to compromise and say you can't have alcohol until after the last school district game is done. Okay, I mean that's that's what that's another question. When I've been contacted, people are asking me about alcohol, and I just I think that that's. And if we're leasing it, I don't think we should lease it for two months. We should lease it for the year. Mm -hmm. And. The school district is, I mean, the Hortonville Youth Sports gets to use it after June 1st or something like that. Or earlier if they can arrange schedule. No, isn't your opening only in May, isn't it? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. the weekend, 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 weekend in May. Or Saturday weekend before in May. Memorial Day. Yeah, so, so the alcohol thing would affect us there, and then we also start well, using the I, I know we, we talk about the alcohol thing a lot, but if you're not, see, right now, last year and this year, <coughs> for that agreement, you have with the village, you're supposed to give the village $4,500 a year, which you did do for the last two years. I know you spend a lot of money. I'm not. I let. I let. Us, I didn't say last slide, but we all agree that they spent like a ton of money up there a couple of years ago. So it's, it wasn't a big deal. But 
you won't need to raise that kind of money to pay us the 4500 if you're getting it. Right, and we're going to, we probably need to see that because what I have is 2500 in the agreement I have. So oh. if there's something else written, then I need to know because I'm the treasurer for HYF. So. Well, $4,000. <coughs> yeah, 4000 right there. Okay, that must be something I don't have then. From 2008. Yeah. Uh, anywho, if the school's taking care of the fields and you're not paying the village, I don't know if you necessarily need, you know, two weeks worth of beer sales. Can you get by? I mean, can you live not having two weeks worth of beer sales? It might not just be the sales. Do people bring coolers? Do people no. bring no? No, we don't allow no carry -ins. Okay. No. I mean, there has to be some compromise here. Yeah. I thought the only time, like last year, they just said when the WIA game was over that's correct. that Saturday, then you could start selling yes. the beer. That's correct. Because they then so they were done. Yeah. You know, so why can that not be? I, it it can't. Help. I but. <coughs> But you know they right. said they well they just said their tournaments in May or whatever. Right. Uh, but the school has it through May. Their games can run into the first part of June. So yeah, I think there's going to be some give and take here. But I think it just has to be the wording that during a WIA game there is no beer sold. Yeah, and that can be. <coughs> you know that, that would be what we would have to word in the contract, and then same thing with youth sports. We will not serve beer during a WIA game doesn't matter what the date is, yeah. as long as there's no game. Yeah. We pretty much adhered to that. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I know you did. And is the beer thing a WIAA thing, or is that a school oh, yeah. district thing? I mean, I get it, it's probably WIA, but do we have another layer? Is it the school district can't have alcohol on the property? School. It's, on, it's on site for yeah. schools. But it's okay. not their property. It's not their property, but if they're leasing it, that's why we put it we in make the sure we have it. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. word it correctly. I, our biggest fear, if they lease it for the year or whatever, is what control do they have over it? Can they say, you can't practice on the field until June 1st or whatever? And that affects us because we start practicing when we can, like in the winter. So, And we're willing to chalk and maintain and do garbages, clean the bathrooms, whatever we need to do down there during our season. That's not a problem for us. but. You know, is the school going to interfere with any of their scheduling if they so have could this be, and, and maybe Russ, I turn to you, and, and again, Bob's not here. Could this be, yes, an agreement with the school district, but could it be almost a threefold agreement? School district, Port and Lee Sports, and the village? Yeah, that's possible if you can get everybody to agree to the terms and conditions, but yeah, you're right. <laughs> it be a multi part. Why? Well, and I mean, that's how I, because that protects. Portland Leaf Sports, the school district feels that the, everyone has an equal hand in this, but the maintenance of the field, clearly they would have to pay more for a lease. Yeah. You know, because we're not maintaining the field. Is that what you're saying? The school district is taking taking care of maintaining those fields up to their standards. Yeah. Which relieves your See, guys. One of the main issues we have is school district season starts so early that, you know, we have full time staff, you know, parks, I mean, street park guys. And, and if we get rain. Guys. And we got. We don't have enough staff. And our, we're, we're, we shouldn't get people over paying them to go up there to talk fields and cut grass. The school needs to help out. Bottom line. Can you have a rep from each group draft the agreement together? So not. Well, I, I think we need to agree what's best for us and then take right. it to them. Uh, and then sit down and negotiate. Yeah. yeah. And that's what we're doing right now. We're trying to find what's best for us. If you could eliminate your guys doing the lawn, doing all that, that maintenance down there. Is that yeah. what you're kind of... Well, I, I want the school to take care of the fields, get them ready for ball games. Uh, I want them to cut the grass. Uh, <coughs> sports, uh, I don't know if it's all the coolers or whatever you got down there, but the electric bills is way north of 600 bucks now per month. And I know you got beer sales, but it's it's eaten into my budget. Mm. That's a lot of money. In. Uh, electricity. Uh, so we got issues like that. You know, if we do lease it, then who pays the utility bills? Do we still lease it for X amount of money just so I can pay utility bills and always stay in our name? So that's something that we should think about. Yeah. Uh, like this party pays utility, this party pay, does all the maintenance, and we're simply providing the, the 
property. You know, right now, okay. the school district comes and takes the and stuff from down there and takes it up to the commercial club. You know, and they've never reimbursed us for that. Uh, little things like that. Who's going to pay for the chop? You know? So we still keep it at ten thousand dollars and still mandate that they take care of the fields. Yes. Yes. Uh, you know, instead of us getting yelled at or you know the athletic director you know, getting on my guys because they want to call a game. You know, the things like that need to stop as well. Uh, I don't like the AD yelling at my people. No. I won't tolerate that no more. And or we just have to have them maintain yeah. it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I agree. They can maintain the field. If they can if they tear them up then they've got to pay to rebuild them. And as you know it costs six grand to rebuild a field. But if they're maintaining the fields, then this if it's a some sort of tri fold agreement, then Horton View Sports is under the understanding when like when you're done at the end of the night, this is how we leave the fields. It's, you know, I mean, it's, I think it's going to have to be a, a, an effort from all three parties. Who carries liability down there? Well, the village. See, if we, the school maintains the fields. You know, they, right now they're supposed to be giving us 4000 You know, maybe they give 4000 to the school, or 5000 to make half the lease, or whatever, and then they can play their games for the rest of the year. The what school still has to mow it. Utility? Yes. Because we still need revenue to write the bills and pay the property insurance. The school will have to have another insurance for their games, but well, that's fine. So we're in the red in this part is what you're saying. We are in the red, and I'm yeah. heavily subsidizing it, and the public works just doesn't have any money. I can't fix my streets, but yet yeah, i got to chop through these fields for these people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean... The former public works director is mentioned in some of the, I mean, so is this something, Carl, who, who do you want to sit down? Is this you as a village rep? And we, I mean, I think it's still going to have to go through legal. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're going to have to go through legal. We're not ready to go then. We we've got to get an agreement in place that we're, so parameters in place that we want. Yeah. Of course. I don't think it either one. All the, well, we're going to take care of these sports. They're you know, then we're the school in a position to dictate what we should do here. We want to we want to do what's best for us first. So let's let's keep batting these okay. ideas. Around. So you you would like to have no maintenance on the fields right now? Who takes care of cleaning the bathrooms and maintaining that building? Mm -hmm. Who does that right now? I think uh, to be honest, I think your sports should be doing that. No. Who's doing that? Now? Who's we doing do that? We now. do now. Yeah. <coughs> are they locked during certain? Are they are they only unlocked during games? Are they locked? They're unlocked all the time. Exactly. Which it's is a public interesting. park. Yeah, so it's a public it's park. Us using it. So if it's you know. leased, then yeah. are they allowed to lock those bathrooms? Yeah, it doesn't happen. We've tried that. It doesn't happen. Okay. Uh, we've gone up there. I've gone up there after tournaments and. You know, like garbage bags, completely overflowing bottles, you know, spilled out on the ground and 10 feet away from tournaments. You know, the little things like that that youth sports needs to step it up as well. So. Can I add a couple things? Yes. For, okay, ahead. just a couple of things for everyone to know here. I, I've been with EU sports for about four, six years, so I kind of kind of know what's going on down there. Now, during the high school season, in the past, the high school has used all three of those diamonds till about five o'clock. So we've always worked, um, when we get our, uh, our practices set, our teams are set in early March or whatnot, we typically get to go on those fields after five. That's usually the time the school, well in the past that's how it's been. Okay, a lot of times they don't use all the diamonds till five o'clock. Most of the time they're only using one. But, so that's kind of a hindrance to us. Uh, the other thing is the last four or five years, uh, maybe not quite that long, three or four, we've cut the grass down there on the outfield. Um, the village just cuts the perimeter and anything outside of the field itself. So um, we've taken it upon ourselves to maintain the grass on the outfields and such. So going forward, I guess that would be one thing to be brought up. Uh, who's going to maintain cutting of the grass? That'd be at the school, us, the village. Um, and I guess the other thing with the bathroom, it, 
it is considered a public park, is it not? Because when we held our last tournament, we, HYS, went and bought toilet roll dispensers and toilet paper because we were told the village had none. Now, <clears throat> just from a perspective, I mean, it's a public park. You guys need to provide necessities down there for people to use the facility. Now, we had went out and I don't know how much we spent, but we got cases of toilet paper down there now because we're running a tournament and the first day, the first night, we had no toilet paper to be had. So, I, well, I don't know nothing about that. Well, it happened. Well, yeah. somebody should have said something. But, I think that uh, those costs, and I would agree it's a public uh, facility, should be borne by the village, but I think that doesn't enter into the price of the lease. The lease is for the land only, for 10000 That's what it is now. Am I correct? Yes, yeah. So any cost above and beyond that, uh, okay, maybe it's shared. They're leasing the land, but here's my question. Now, I as a public citizen, <coughs> and I call the village and say, I'd like to rent Otto Miller Park. Can I do that if they're leased out to the high school? No, I no. don't think you can. So it's not a public park. My kids have never played on the while they played one year. We go to Dale now. I, I thought it was leased out once here a year or two ago. You, you keep calling the public park, but we still, it has to go through your sports to rent it, even in the summertime, because so they have priority. So it's not like so you can it's, go down there it is, and play. It isn't, you know, it's yeah. Well, it is, it, it is public property that we know, but the lease is actually between the village of Hortonville and uh, the high school. So I, I think, you know, if I, lease, if, that, if I lease property from Joe Blow, uh, I'm completely liable for that. Uh, I have control over it. So whoever leases this should have control. Exactly. Like right now, if I called the village and said I wanted to rent out the park. Which? Any park? Otto Miller. Any park. I, I would assume that there's toilet paper. I would assume that there's all that in the bathroom. But right. that particular park is very unique because it's not like a, I'm it's not a right ballpark. Here. It's a yeah. ballpark. Yeah. But let's say I wanted to rent the ballpark. I would then need to contact Portonville Youth Sports or do I contact the high school, high school the village probably, yeah. in the future? But right yeah. now you just said that scheduling goes through. So that's kind of tricky too. Some, well, not some. The, like the, the fire department, did they go through you or through? I don't believe so. Because yeah, they came through the loss, they came through the village. Well, I understand that once the season is done, you go to back to the village. Yes, yeah. yeah. Always. Yeah. We've never given the high school or youth sports the authority to rent that out. Mm -hmm. The village has always rented yeah. it out. But we've always been the village and the, and the high there's school. Those are games, yes. But then when there's not a game, then we can lease it. And, and I believe. Whoever handles that now, I'm not sure who handles it. If, if Nathan does, Nathan okay. Does, yeah. What you did is you you had youth sports um, schedule, you have the high school schedule, and then you know, okay, it's free the last Saturday in July, so the fire department can rent it. That's what we have always done. Yeah. But then who does the chalking? Who does the raking of the field? I mean, so let's say Hortonville Youth Sports or High School left it in a certain kind of condition <coughs> and somebody like the fire department and, and just to use that as an example they go through there who's and it rained the night before who's chalking the fields who's doing all that it was at the village that went out and did that Carl? we I mean, always did that and yeah. you're looking to eliminate that is what you're looking to do well yeah that's yeah. your thirty thousand dollars cost <coughs> uh, yeah yeah you have so then do else. you say to someone renting it for instance the fire department you have to do your own maintenance you have to mark right. your own. It's not a fire department doesn't pay anything anyways because they get waived. Otherwise, <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, that's another can of worms. So, yeah, they well, they that's their, another building that would be nice to lease out, too. So. Yeah. Uh, so, the only rental we we get might have one rental a year. I think that's about it. Outside yeah. of youth sports. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of times, our rentals work with these sports. Right. Be I don't think yeah. anyone else rents. Does it? Does but the lease need to be with the high school, though? Is it something that we could lease? 
Blu-ray paying the four thousand dollars? Like, is that something we could lease? Why would we lease it to you for four when we could do it for ten? Oh, that's why I'm right asking. Now. Why? Well, I'm not why saying who uses four. it more? The way these agreements are, we do. You do. Peter, the way these agreements are was ten thousand from the school and four thousand from you. I know that. I, I so I agree. It was. But what she's saying is, can we lease it to them, and they pay us four when we could lease it to the. We can lease it. I suppose we can, we can have the lease between anybody. I wouldn't recommend three party though. I'd recommend one responsible party, whether it be youth sport yeah. or whether it be the high school, because then they can control the whole thing with a sublease. Well, that's up to them. But we have to. But if I have a rental house and I have a very thick stipulation in there about subleasing. Because I leased it out to someone, I know who's in there, but if they leave and they sublease that property, I'd like a little control of who's in there. You know, I mean... Well, they leave, they break that lease, wouldn't they? No. Well, yeah, at that okay. point, but All we right. need to put something in there about subleasing then, because that would be a sublease. That's up to them. Yeah. And, and I'm not just saying $4,000. I'm just saying if we're going to be paying this $4,000 anyway, why don't we split the 14 between the two parties, or why don't... You know, youth sports pay, you know, the bulk of it, and then the school. I don't know. I well, no one's let's go back to what you said before. We have some right. uh, utility expense there. We will still have, uh, you know, if it's considered a public property and we must maintain the bathrooms, we'd have some, you know, we'd have to work that out, but we'd have some expense there too. So, uh, you know, we can work on the number, but I, my firm belief is that I would rather have just one party lease it, and then you would have the right to work with, or they would have the right to work with you on using the facility for a price for what you guys establish. So I think it makes nothing against these sports, and it makes it cleaner to have the school do it because they have the money in the time. Okay. All right. And then uh, all we have to do is make sure there's a guarantee that they are protected. Right. We only need a couple stipulations. They can use the fields up and they can sell beer after WIA is done yeah. or whatever. Yeah. <coughs> but if a public person contacts the school and says, I'd like to rent that field out for the, or the fire department or whomever, then they should be able to do that through the school then, correct? Not the village. Because we've, we've, yeah. we've, we've relinquished the renting authority on that part. Does that sound right, Russ? You just kind of... We can well, I'm just thinking you know, as, quiet. as you're talking um, and just kind of um, picturing how that might work. I don't want to, I don't want there to be hard feelings. There's absolutely, there was no ill intent and then rumors started about this got sold for a dollar and I've got enough emails and enough calls about it. I don't want any hard feelings. We've got, Horton Blue Shore is a great organization. The school district, great, you know, great school district and the village. I think all three parties can sit down and figure this out. I, there's I no know. hard, there's, there's no reason for somebody to feel shunned. Why are we doing a year lease to the school when they've only had April 1st and May 31st before? Correct? Why are we? Why would we do a whole year so they can take yeah, care? Is of that it? what you said to do? Maintain. Yeah, these? I mean, see, that's another thing. I, we have these fields have to be taken care of year round. You know, I see them working on the football field year round. You know, we have to work on these fields year round. It's not. It costs money to take care of these fields year round. That's why we need to do a year, if, <coughs> or a ten year lease, <coughs> whatever. As long as they're taken care of. I like the idea. Of we have. We have to. Taking care of those fields, I I love the idea of just that not being on your shoulders. And then if they get any complaints, they can complain to themselves. Yeah. I just think I know that this is a this this really spreads you thin during that time of year, and especially when it's WIA standards and field condition is a matter of opinion. Is it just the fields, or how about outside the fences? It's everything. It's everything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's take my last two weeks. I've got summer helpers. They're down for this week now for the whole rest of the year. You know, we've got to pay full time guys that do you not know, go up there and take care of this place for the rest of the year. Yeah. And it's on your guys. You've got three weeds. you got to do this. So, you know, there's projects that we need to do on Main Street. There's projects we need to do on other parts. 
we're taking care of the field year round and getting a hard time because we charge only charge ten thousand for it. Ten thousand is nothing. So what I'm looking for is whoever we lease it to, they need to pick up the majority of the responsibility if they're once using it. No offense on Hart and Williams Sports, would, but would the high school have more more of that that opportunity to maintain those fields or Hart and Williams Sports? I don't, there's nobody here from the school as far as I know, so that's why I'm, who yeah. has the yeah. ability to, to maintain those fields yeah. up to the WIAE standards? My concern would be your volunteers. Mm -hmm. That would be, and it wouldn't be volunteers. Pardon me? That wouldn't be volunteers. But your board is all volunteer, and are you going to, would you be able to even consider doing that? We're doing it now, and we do it on the weekends when okay. we, we track the fields all weekend. That's totally a volunteer. We have some paid staff that come in and do it. Um, from Friday to Sunday, that's our job, too. Mm -hmm. I'm just worried more about the school, if they've got their certain standards, you know, and then that's on your shoulders. Mm -hmm. No, we, we have to put it in the contract for the school that they have to do their own fields for their games because they are very demanding about how mm -hmm. they are done. Mm -hmm. So it has to be during that time of year. It is going to have to be for sure. Then if U Sports wanted to do it the remainder, we could put it in their contract. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Yeah. It relinquishes all During school games, WIA games, or practices, or whatever, the school maintains it. That has to be written in their contract. One, one thing we have to be aware of is youth sports put a lot of money into these fields, and they're, they're very expensive fields. They're nice fields. We get a lot of compliments from all over. And you would have groups that want to come in there and practice on them when they're not ready, and they just want to do all the practice. I'm talking about the school. And if they trash those fields, you know, you could be talking six thousand dollars worth of damage to a field easily. And so they're gonna be responsible for the upkeep of those fields to the standards yes. that are set. Not just keep them ready for the games. But then the rest of the year, like June, July, August, like right now, you sports would take over. Hmm? Is that what you're suggesting? Yeah. Hey. We'd like to Hey, yeah, one thing. Uh, if you just take a look down at that part over the last five or six years, we put a lot of stuff into that part. Not just the West and East Diamond. Two new scoreboards, batting cage turf, uh, frame on the cage, concrete underneath. The school hasn't added one penny down there. Hortonville Youth Sports, because I was in Hortonville Youth Sports right. many years ago with my kids, and Hortonville Youth Sports has always donated Time, money, yep. projects, mm -hmm. always. Mm -hmm. They have a lot into that park. Mm -hmm. have a lot of Throughout here. all the years. I, I the too. That's why yeah. they We're should get the less. <laughs> yeah, I don't want because to of what they donate. They should get what? Less. They should pay less for They put more towards the field. They they put put maybe, the maybe they should be the leaseholder. Actually, I, they don't have to pay anything because they put everything back into the fields. Yes, they, they do. always have. Yeah. But you know, even though it said four thousand on on here, we really haven't demanded the money because of everything. They, they go above here. and beyond. Yeah, and they, yes. they've never yes. paid us the four thousand because they've always spent more than that. Yes, they have. So, uh, but if they're going to be in charge of the school, they're going to. I have no problem with them being the least holders, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I'd actually prefer. <laughs> I agree. They can deal with the high school. Well, the high school, yeah. I mean, I, no offense, but I wish somebody was here to talk about this um, from the school because this was the, why we set up this committee, the whole mm -hmm. to make it more of an open dialogue. And I've been contacted by some school board members, and I invited them here tonight, and they're not here. So you get contacted a lot. I do. <laughs> My God. I do. Uh, I've never heard of it. You get all the rules for that. Calls, emails. emails. I personally, I would think the school right. should be doing that. <coughs> because if you don't get it exactly <coughs> right, then well, the least the least 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 least
I still think the school should maintain the fields during their season. Yeah, yeah. they have to answer to the other team and the WIA and everybody, so that pressure should. I, I think we can I figure something out. Definitely. Right. Are you looking for that? I think we need to work yep. with you okay. sports first. Yes. And get on board there, and uh, they can be the primary managers of that. I so think initially though it should be all three parties. Yeah. So, because we don't have anybody from the school here, so that, that way they can at least get their word in. She's invited school board members. Mm -hmm. I know, they're not here. They're not here. They show no interest. <laughs> well, they're interested. They're interested. The problem with media just didn't work out scheduling wise. I don't want to make anyone feel any. Everyone has a, has a share in this. And I think maybe we need to gather. Well, I don't want to. So I think it's a good down. way to start out the process, yes. is to get yeah. everybody on the same page. Important so resources we put a ton into them. those fields. The high school, what other yeah. alternatives do they have? They've got commercial club, and well, not that I want to yeah. steer them in that direction, but I mean, important resources put so much into these fields. I think, yes, they're a stakeholder, but I think the high schools also, or the, the school district's a stakeholder as well, and I think we should just, I think all three parties should be involved in the discussion of where to go with us. See, what also heard also that we heard at our last meeting was the lack of communication with the school. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we said, we're going to set down these agreements, we need somebody here from youth sports, from the school, mm -hmm. and the village to put this together yeah. so there's communication. If they don't show up for it then, well, well, then it's, not our, it's not our problem with communication, right? So they should be formally notified. Who's spearheading this? Is this it's going to be kind of a village uh, it's kind of moderate? Of boss, I guess. Yeah, between the two of you. Uh, Ross is doing a great job, by the way. Listen, I, I just have to tell you, I've never sat next to one of the best negotiators in my life as this gentleman right here <laughs> on the police contract. <laughs> this guy's got a lot of experience. He's your number one man. Carl, is that comfortable for you? I mean, I know that this has been a lot on your shoulders maintaining this. <coughs> Does this sound like a, this? It, what you planned on coming out of this meeting? You planned on coming out of here with at least something? I wanted to a get a feel from the board, get a feel from youth sports, and get a feel from the school. Mm -hmm. uh, I also <coughs> want to stay my position is I can't public works cannot afford to subsidize the school district. Anyway. <coughs> So you're the one who's it's not fair to the Hortonville taxpayers. Yeah, you're the one in the day in and day out. Yeah. We work twice a month. <laughs> Does that sound fair? Mm. Yep. That's wow. what we've been willing to do that all along. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> I got a question. Once our season is done at the end of July, I mean, is the thought is that whoever is going to be the primary is going to take care of the facility from January 1 to December 31st? Is that the idea? Somebody's going to have to do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're all, we're all. Right. I mean, when done, I mean, yeah, that will be something with the negotiations with yeah. all three parties. No, the village could still come in and rise and pull meters and stuff like that. Yeah, maybe that stuff we wouldn't be. Yeah. Like, yeah, the yeah. yeah. stuff we could probably do. Yeah. You know, because let's be honest, we should find a way to get that contract out going. You know, stuff, little things like that. East Horse, like I said, they, they do a great job taking care of the infields during, the, during their season. Uh, there's still a lot of out, a lot of outside perimeters mowing. You know, it takes a day and a half to mow that property. So, um, you know, maybe we can find a way to contract out the major parts of it. And, you know, the village take care of this and that, and it, we're, we're going to have to sit down and work through it. But anything like that you can think of, just write it down and yep. bring it to the meeting. Okay. And we'll try. Uh, <coughs> I know Craig <coughs> travels a lot, doesn't he? He does. Yeah. yeah. But it, he doesn't necessarily have to. Yeah. Because we're officers I mean, too, so at least two officers probably for us. I think what we need to do is do what's best for youth sports and the village and the school. But it, it, we, there can be no longer be any one side of the agreement. So. Yeah. But to be fair, like we talked about, since they've been in the agreement for this long, to have them at the table. Oh, yeah, we'll have them at the table. Right. Yeah. Let me get your phone number and stuff before you leave. Sure. Right. <laughs> and
can, and we'll reach out to Andy. Um, I'm sure they're busy. They got a lot going on. They might be getting the field ready. Who knows? Tomorrow's dedication. You know. Yeah. Uh, so that's probably why they weren't here. But they're interested, and I, I know, it's not. We're not going to sit there and try to hold them over a barrel, but uh, we'll do what we have to do to take care of those ordinal citizens right. first. And she's right. There's how many communities that pay into taxes for the school district? Yeah. We're one municipality. So I like to understand school personnel being busy, not being here. But when you said you had board members I, that contacted you and you invited them here, two. you would have thought at least one or two of them would have showed up. Two board members. Yep. <coughs> well, we'll try. Try them again, I okay. guess. I think, I think we kind of got our march orders. I think being a former employee makes me a little more accessible. When are you mostly available? Early on. Well, one actually works with my husband. Eight yeah. times like this? Yeah. 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 Is that, if that works for you? Yeah. Maybe we should set something up for... How's next week look for you? I'm open. Um, I know Thursday we have a... Right. What about next Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday would be fine. Not gonna work? Yeah. No. Well, how, what's, how early can you get here? Because it, it, it might behoove us to, if it's a school district employees, if we can do it at 3 to 3.30, if that's possible. Tuesday would be better. Tuesdays would be work better. <laughs> <laughs> I can make 3.30 on my own. On Tuesday? On Tuesday? Is that Tuesday? Tuesday next Wednesday. Tuesday at 3.30 or? Tuesday would work. Well, yeah. Tuesday Wednesday doesn't work for you. Otherwise, Thursday would be ideal. Thursday. 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 Following week with the school, you start getting into open house and mm -hmm. stuff, so you're yeah. better off doing it next week. Yeah, season. next week could be. Better. We'll try for Tuesday or Thursday. Um, let's do, let's do Thursday. Yeah. Give them a little more time then. Yeah. <laughs> Thursday at three thirty here, okay. and just put together a list of things you want or want to see. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. Thank you. Thank you. Did you Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Just write it on there. Oh. Good news, right? Just being got this all settled now. No more conversation on this. And then we got next on the agenda. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. aye.